Birth is a beautiful and natural process. Almost every species gives birth to the next generation in one way or another, and that's really the key part of the sentence one way or another. You see, every species of animal gives birth in a different way, and not to shame any species, but it's not always all that beautiful. Brace yourself to see what I mean. This is how these 20 animals look while giving birth. Number 20. Elephants I'm going to begin with one of the largest animals in the world, and it is in fact the largest land animal in the world, the elephant. When you think about the massive bulk that these animals have, you often have to wonder how giving birth is like for them. After all, their babies are not going to be small, or at least not how we picture small to be, so the process has got to be painful. But the truth of the matter is that elephants have it much worse than any human, or pretty much any other animal for that matter. Why? Well, that's because elephants have the longest pregnancy period of any living mammal. When you think about the human pregnancy, the typical standard term is about nine months, give or take a week or two. But for elephants, well, they go through a pregnancy that can last up to two years. Could you simply imagine being pregnant for two years and having to deal with all the ups and downs that come with that? <laughs> I didn't think so. But that also raises a question. Why do they take so long? Well, it's a two-pronged answer, really. The first part is their size. When baby elephants come out, they're already pretty huge, and that takes time to develop in the womb. The other thing is intelligence. Whereas human babies can barely do anything once they're out of the womb, elephants are born intelligent. So, to develop the brain to be what it needs to be, it needs time. That's another reason why the population numbers for elephants are so important. Unlike many other animals, they can't simply repopulate on a whim. They need time to develop their young, and that's a daunting process. So yeah, be kind to elephants, especially the female ones, because they go through a lot. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Watching a cow give birth is, well, it's an intense experience, that's for sure. I don't want to offend our poor bovine friends, but it is in many ways a touch grim to behold. There's something almost body horror-like about the whole thing. The crazy thing is, and this shows real strength of character, sometimes cows will give birth while standing up. Now that's impressive. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below by using the hashtag sweet topic. Number 19. The Harbor Seal now I'm talking about the species known as the harbor seal, who also has to go through quite a period before going through birth. Ironically, the harbor seal has a period that is almost in line with humans because they can give birth in nine months or it can take them even up to 11. But there's a reason for the uncertainty in times. Gestation includes a period of delayed implantation when the fertilized egg divides into a hollow ball of cells one layer thick. It stops growing and remains free-floating in the uterus for one and a half to three months. That's not what you would expect from a pregnancy. You may expect them to be continuously growing over a slow period of time, but that's not what happens here at all. Eventually, the egg in question will graft itself to the uterine wall of the seal, and only after that will it go into the process of developing fully. But there's a reason that this occurs. Delayed implantation gives the mother time to recover from her last pregnancy. It also assures that the ensuing pup will be born when the environmental conditions are optimal for its survival. Survival. That's something that can sometimes get lost in everything. Animals don't have doctors or caretakers to help their mothers or babies when they're born. At best, they have their mating partner or a pack that can watch out for them. But if there's a medical problem, well, then they're on their own. So by allowing the mother to recover before making another baby, it helps to ensure survival for both parties, and that's a good thing to hear. Sometimes you just have to develop such odd birthing techniques in order to survive. Number 18. Porcupines 
Porcupines are one of the more unique creatures in our world. After all, they have quills that can absolutely devastate people and animals should they find themselves to be too close, or even try to attack them. But wouldn't that defense mechanism mean that they're risking their children at birth? Well, not really, because as always, life finds a way. What's more, when mating season comes around for both sides of the porcupine equation, they get a little bit aggressive. That's because both sides compete for very things that will be vital to them for the birthing process. And for the females, they'll fight one another to get the best territory to give birth to their children, which makes sense when you think about it. As for the males, they do the typical thing of trying to fight for the best female, but it's not as simple as that to get a date. The next part is kind of disgusting, but I promise that it's true. To ensure that they do get a mate, the male will get a potential female partner and then urinate on them. That's right, if the female leaves during the process, then that will tell the male that they're not going to be partners. However, if the female takes it in stride, then they can be a couple. I don't get it either, and so I'll just move on. Once the two are then joined in the overall sense, they'll defend their gotten spot until the female is ready to become pregnant. After mating, females are pregnant for about seven months, usually between 205 and 217 days. But there's another twist in all of this. They have one large baby instead of a pack of smaller ones, which is very atypical for mammals. The babies are born with quills, but they're soft to begin, and then they harden up within an hour. So even the baby porcupines become something to fear. Number 17. Crocodiles So far I've shown you creatures that give birth after a long period of time, but now we'll go on the opposite side of that spectrum and give you an animal who can lay their young quite quickly and then it waits for them to come alive. I'm talking about crocodiles, who are amongst many animals that lay eggs. Those eggs, once laid, will remain in their shell form for about three months at most, but that's not the surprising part. American crocodiles typically have a three-week development period between mating and laying eggs, while some saltwater crocodiles can take four to six weeks. Even if we go on the high end of that and say six weeks, that means that a crocodile will have their young in the world in less than five months at the maximum. Plus, those eggs aren't singular in number, nor are they a handful at a time. Instead, the mother crocodile will lay her eggs in numbers of 30 to 60, and that means that there's going to be a lot of baby crocodiles running around before too long. But since it's tough to watch over that many eggs and survive, the crocs will either dig a hole to lay them in, or put dirt and other materials over the eggs to build a mound to keep them protected. So they dig themselves out once they're hatched, right? Well, wrong. The mother needs to to still pay attention to the next part because the babies won't be strong enough to dig themselves out. And if that happens and she misses their birth, well, that would be bad. That might explain why crocodiles do not dominate the earth, but the young crocs do have to be tended to by their mother in case predators come around. And I'm sure that very few would be stupid enough to mess with a mother crocodile. Number 16. The Sugar Glider if you don't know what a sugar glider is, that's okay. It's a kind of marsupial, and one that has been bred to be a pet. So it's not an example of an exotic animal being wrongly taken care of by people. It's a common pet that you can get in certain areas. Because of its marsupial heritage, it actually does not take long for these critters to give birth. Once pregnant, they can have their babies out in just about 17 days. Now I'm sure that many animal species wish that they could have such results. It certainly would make things a lot easier, but also more complicated. After birth, the babies, called joeys, then crawl into their mother's pouch, where they remain until they're about 70 to 74 days old. The babies actually wean themselves, and not the other way around, and once they reach a certain age, they will then depart to be on their own. This goes double for the females, as they'll leave before being able to give birth themselves, and believe it or not, sugar gliders only need to be about a year old before they can give birth, and so their population numbers can skyrocket quite quickly. In places like the United States, you're going to need a breeding license to do it legally. They will crack down on you for that, so you can't say you haven't been warned. The baby sugar gliders are indeed quite adorable, and you can see why so many would want them as a pet. They have to be taken care of in captivity, or else certain things might happen within the family that no one wants. Number 15. Hippos 
I'm going to be a little bit blunt here. Hippos are terrible. Seriously, they are really, really terrible. They're monstrous creatures that have no feelings of remorse when they hurt and or kill people, and they're basically amphibious tanks of ultimate destruction. Now, I'm not prejudiced against hippos, I'm just talking about the truth of the matter. They're monsters, but they are monsters who birth children, and that's why I will begrudgingly talk about them on this list. One of the first things that I want to mention is that hippos don't mate that often. The males will only get with the females about once every two years, and that kind of period usually won't help the animal to survive, but hippos are built to last and to beat up everyone because they're terrible, and thus that period doesn't harm them. Another interesting tidbit is that unlike many other animals, hippos don't have a definitive mating season. They do tend to mate by the end of the dry season, but it's hardly a set month or date. What's more, hippos don't have singular partners in the traditional sense, but instead, one of the males of the group will mate with multiple females. And then once the female gets pregnant, she won't be able to have another pregnancy for another 17 months. That would also help with the whole we're not mating for two years thing. But given such long periods of waiting, how are they able to tell when they're ready to mate? Well, the males will sniff the females' butts and urine. Yes, it's another weird one. And they also have a very aggressive process with the males to determine who gets to mate with who. But that's not something we're going into. Simply put, when it comes to the hippo, they can just take a long time to mate. Oh, and did I mention they're terrible? Number 14. Snails. Snails are creatures that you honestly don't think about or pay attention to unless they're right in front of you. If you think about it, do you have any snail species near your place of living? Because if not, you're going to wonder how they give birth. That's why I'm here to help. And with snail eggs, you really need to learn more about them because they are rather odd. For example, depending upon the species of snail that birth them, they'll have special capabilities to suit their environment. For example, some snail eggs will float on the waters that they're born into, or they might have a sticky substance that allows them to stick to plants so that they aren't noticed very easily. They tend to be about the size of a seed, and thus, from our perspective, they'd be like a speck on the ground if we were to see them at all. But how about I talk about their parents? Most species of snails are hermaphrodites and have both male and female reproductive organs. Still, they have to mate with one another in order to reproduce in most situations, and in many species, they'll mate and then store the sperm for later use, sometimes for up to a year. They're also able to mate with one another about five times per year. It only takes a few weeks to hatch, so they have an advantage over many other species, but arguably the grossest fact about snail eggs is that people love to eat them. Number 13. Snakes. Snakes are the opposite of snails when it comes to where you can find them. You likely have snakes near your area right now and simply just don't know it because most snakes, not all but most, lay eggs and they too have a quick cycle of birthing them once they're ready. By that I mean they have to reach a certain level of maturity before they can reproduce, and that can take almost three years depending upon the species. Considering snakes can live for about a dozen years or so, that doesn't make it all too bad. A snake is ready to lay her eggs within two weeks to a month after copulation and fertilization. So where do they lay their eggs once they're ready to be laid? Well, that depends upon the snake itself. You might know of some species that bury their eggs, but not all of them do that. Some seek out more natural areas to lay them so that they can have protection without the mother having to dig and then dig the eggs out. As for how many eggs are laid, well, that too depends upon the species. There are some that only lay about a dozen, and then others can have up to 30. Once those eggs are laid, they can take a few months to hatch, and then there are new snakes that are ready to enter the world. Number 12. Giraffes Giraffes are one of nature's wonders in many ways. 
After all, the reason they look like they do is because they've evolved enough to have a long neck so that they can reach the food that many other species in Africa can't. They even use those long necks to fight other giraffes. It does happen. But when it comes to childbirth, they live up to their unique nature in another way. They give birth while standing up. Yes, it's true. When they give birth, they remain upright and their offspring drops to the ground once it's time. It has to be seen to be believed, but it does happen. Once more, they are yet another animal species that have a long pregnancy period as they go almost 15 months with the baby inside of them before giving birth. The 400 to 470 day growing period makes sure that the calf is developed enough to quickly stand up and move around, an important ability when you share your savanna habitat with lots of hungry predators, ones that aren't going to be afraid to go after a mother giraffe or her offspring if it means getting food for their next meal. But wouldn't that mean the baby giraffes have to be rather tall once they're born, you may ask? Well, you are correct. When the babies are born, just when they're born, they're about six feet tall. That's right, the babies of giraffes are above the average height of the human race, and we all know how tall that they get when they're fully grown. On the more comforting side though, once newborns are had, the mothers come together and watch over them all, and the newborns get to enjoy each other's company. Isn't that adorable? Number 11. Kangaroos Now we're going down under to talk about one of the most well-known animals in the world, that being the kangaroo. There are many of you who would love to see these animals up close or to have them as pets, and one of their iconic features is having the mother kangaroo with her little joey in her pouch. But how do they get to that point? Well, first comes the mating rituals, and for the males, it means that they have to fight other kangaroos with their arms and feet. That's why they've been associated with boxing, because they technically do it every mating season. Now, once mating has commenced, the kangaroos have another surprise in store for you. It only takes them about a month to give birth. But even in that, there is a twist. Once they're born, they don't look like many of the other younglings that you've seen. They're not big at all. Instead, they move from the mother's womb to the legendary pouch and then slowly become developed within there. That process can take about eight months, and only after it's gotten big enough does it get out of the mother's pouch and try to live its own life. But in the early stages, it'll come right back to its mother. Number 10. Sea Turtles Given that sea turtles live in the sea, you might think that they'd lay their eggs there, but that's not true, and for various reasons. One is that this would leave the eggs open to predators, and we can't have that happening. Instead, the sea turtles will wander to the shore and then lay their eggs up on the sand. The sea turtle lays up to 100 eggs at a time, which then incubate in the warm sand for about 60 days. The temperature of the sand will determine the genders of the baby sea turtles, with cooler sand producing more males and warmer sand producing more females, not something that you may have expected. Once they hatch, they will then move en masse to the water and hope to avoid the predators that await them there. Those that do make it to the water are able to find little shelters for themselves to hide in and then grow up. Number 9. The Horse Baby horses are arguably one of the most adorable and popular babies out there. The foals are known to be nicely sized, and they have a look that makes them attractive to children. Plus, the idea of raising a baby horse and then riding it after you've made a long-term bond with it is really appealing to many. Ironically, horses are one of the very few animal species that do benefit from having human intervention when it comes to having birth. Yes, they can birth their foals on their own, but a veterinarian helping can ensure that both the mother and the baby remain safe. Like humans, horses sometimes don't show that they're pregnant for the first few months of their life, but when they do get pregnant, they can go a year or even over without giving birth. Number 8. Suriname Toads 
Frogs and toads are very unique creatures when it comes to birthing, and the Suriname toad might be near the top of uniqueness. But why is that? Well, their mating process and birthing process almost boggles the mind. Case in point, when the male is ready to mate with the female, there is no simple intercourse between them. Instead, an aquatic acrobat display happens, and that leads to the female detaching her eggs from the body onto the male so that he can fertilize them. Then, once the male is done, the eggs go back to the female via the holes on her back. Yes, that means that when they're born, they're literally crawling out of the mother's back. Nature can be quite weird and rather frightening. Number 7. African Chicklets when you're in the ocean, the fear of predators is paramount in your mind. They could be all around you at any time, and if you're not careful, well, you'll be dead. That goes double for your eggs or young guppies that you've given birth to. We all remember the opening to Finding Nemo, right? Well, African chicklids are a special kind of fish that help to ensure safety of their eggs and eventually their hatched children by shielding them from harm. But how do they do that? Well, they keep them in their mouths. Yes, these fish are known as mouth breeders as they will keep their eggs or their live young in their mouths for certain periods of time to ensure that nothing happens to them. And when they're in egg form, they can hold them in their mouths for about a month. When they're hatched, they can literally vacuum their offspring into their mouths until they're big enough to deal with problems. Number 6. Bats Bats are fascinating creatures from top to bottom, and if they weren't, would we have Batman? Well, no. That's what I thought. But what may surprise you is that baby bats are birthed and nurtured much like baby humans are. For example, they're born live and then they're nursed by their parents for quite a period of time. Once the baby bat is grown to a certain level, they'll then begin to help their family around the home, you know, the bat cave. They'll even fly alongside their mothers at night to go and hunt for food. This isn't instantaneous, mind you. It can take up to 12 weeks for those bats to fly. Another connection is that they only give birth to one baby at a time. To get around this for larger population numbers, they stay in colonies and they basically have group births. Number 5. Octopuses there's been one common thread all throughout this video so far in terms of the mothers giving birth to their children. Regardless of whether they were live or egg births, the mother was alive after the process. However, with an octopus, it's sometimes not the case. They're the kind of animal that will lay their eggs and then perish. So thus, they're giving their lives so that other lives may be born. Depending on the species, octopuses can lay anywhere from 1 to 100,000 eggs and they'll make sure to pick a location that is safe from predators so that as many of their children as possible can live. Some species are able to last a while after birth so that they can cater to their eggs, and one species even takes care of their eggs for four years before they hatch. Number 4. Possums Possums are another great example of a marsupial who has a unique birthing habit. For example, 11 to 13 days after mating, over 20 infants can be born to a single female possum. Typically, their litter sizes are a bit smaller, but they can get that high should they desire. Not unlike the kangaroos that were discussed earlier, possums' offspring are very small. One of them wouldn't even be the size of a dime. Also, like kangaroos, once the offspring are born, they head into the mother's pouch so that they can then be taken care of and developed. What's more, it takes a few months of life before the baby's eyes even open. By the time that they're about five months old, they can be nine inches long and then ready for life on their own. Number three, male seahorses. Throughout most of nature, it's well documented that the female of the species is the one who gives birth. That goes especially for mammals, and yes, that also includes humans. However, there are plenty of species out there that do not specifically identify as male or have the abilities of both a male and a female. I've already talked about one via snails. But if you're looking for a definitive male that gives birth, you need only to look at male seahorses. How does it work though? Well, the male seahorses have a pouch on their bodies where the young ones can grow, so the female takes her eggs and puts them into the male during mating, and then the male fertilizes the eggs that are now within him. Now, it may seem very weird, but it's also very fascinating. Number 2. Guinea Pigs 
Given how many guinea pigs are in the world today, you know that they have their mating rituals and birthing cycles down pat. Surely enough, the males do have to win over the females, and once they do, the true mating can then begin. A guinea pig's pregnancy will last about 9 or 10 weeks, a sow might bear from 1 to 6 pups or even more, and the average litter size is 3. Like other creatures, the female grows as she becomes more pregnant, and you'll even be able to see the young ones within her moving around before the birth are had. And if you have a guinea pig yourself, do be careful with the young mother and help ensure that everything goes smoothly for her, just as I do with my beautiful pet guinea pig Twinkle. She's so adorable and such a great mother. Number 1. Rabbits isn't it rather appropriate that I talk about rabbits and their birthing style last? I mean, after all, rabbits are synonymous with having large families and birthing all the freaking time. One of the biggest reasons for that is because of their gestation period. It's barely a month at some times, and what's more, it can only take about 15 minutes for them to birth however many children they may have. Typically, a rabbit can birth six kits on average, however, those numbers can sometimes skyrocket up to 14, hence why the rabbit population is so abundant. When the kits are born, they don't have many abilities, which includes being blind and deaf, but after about 10 days, and with some nursing from their mother, they'll be able to live life as they were meant to. That's all from the realm of the animal kingdom and how animals give birth out there. Were you surprised by the sometimes complex or odd natures that occur with these animals giving birth? And which ones did you hear about and were then weirded out by? Do you know of any other animal with complicated birthing processes that should be on this list? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on your screen, and I will see you next time. I love you.